this episode we're going to discuss the Valerian steel rear suspension which contains three major custom features to it and those would be the rear spindles, the rear differential cradle to which the differential bolts into and the rear crossover suspension. Of the custom elements, the spindles and the crossover over the top shock mounting system are the simplest, while the differential cradle was quite over designed and quite complicated. So we'll start with the spindle since it's pretty simple. And looking at this CAD drawing, you can see how there's not that much to it. If we were making something that needed to be able to be fabricated very quickly and not look sculptural, you could just make a little Kleenex box style of spindle where you have the bolt pattern of the hub being able to bolt to it and then you could just have the attachments to the wishbones for the independent rear suspension being able to attach to those points but because uh, this is sculptural we wanted to make it more aesthetically pleasing and, and add some interest to it so it's made of one water jet part that the hub bolts to whereas the rest of it is custom bent tubing stainless steel tubing so it's made out of a water jet part that have the hub bolted to it and the rest of it is built out of stainless steel tubing that that's welded up. This particular spindle is very simple because unlike the front wheels, the rear wheels don't turn. So there's not a whole lot to it. Mechanically, uh, there's just a certain geometry that you want to achieve and, and that, that's, that's about it. Compared to the front suspension, it's quite simple. The differential cradle, on the other hand, it's quite complicated. It's over-designed and it's overbuilt. And it, the reason I did that, it was strictly for aesthetic. Uh, it's the very rear of the car, and we've got this beautiful uh, winner quick change differential. It's it's just really quite a beautiful piece. I, I love these things. And since this, this is the very rear of the vehicle, I wanted to have something equally beautiful to bolt the differential into. So I just went a little bit overboard with all the tubing design and whatnot. The, the good thing about over designing it like that is that it ends up being really strong and on our cars and in general it's better to be overbuilt rather than underbuilt for sure. And here you can see that it's got a couple of slogans from some rather famous pop culture references after which the car is named and Winner is Coming and Valar Harris. and anybody who's seen that piece of cinema will know what this is referencing. And once we got the differential cradle fabricated, it just had to be attached to the frame here. And here you see in the frame that it's got this vacuum chamber that interrupts the truss. And the reason I had to do that was the drive shaft is like four inches in diameter. And there just really wasn't enough room for the drive shaft to fit through any of the trussing. So I needed something that would interrupt the truss and still be strong and still be beautiful. So I've got a, an inventory of old vacuum chambers that I've accumulated over the years and this one's it's a beautiful piece of work in and of itself and the drive shaft goes from the transmission through the vacuum chamber and by extension through the truss and attaches to the uh, rear differential and from the rear differential the uh, you know there's two axles that go to the side and you have your independent rear suspension and unlike a solid axle vehicle the differential does not travel with the wheels as they move up and down so the so the differential is bolted solidly into the actually the differential cradle which is welded to the frame so it's actually part of the frame and the last bit of this thing which is relatively simple compared to the rest of it is this over the top shock arrangement and they have to be offset from each other since the the shocks extend past the center line of the vehicle and so we had to offset it so therefore the spindles are not mirror images of each other one of them had to have the shock more to the front and the other one needed to have the shock more to the rear so that you, you wouldn't get interference and it of course it's a very inefficient way of volumetrically of designing our rear suspension because it just takes up a lot more room than it needs to but it's in our car and we don't really care about things like that for this car and my cars in general i like to be able to see the suspension working i like to have it out there yeah when you're building a custom car you always need to stand your toes be willing to improvise in the moment because there's always things that come up that are going to surprise you it's, it's impossible for anyone to foresee all obstacles i would say that concludes my rant about or my rant about this topic. As always, no animals were harmed in the making of this video, although some humans surely receive permanent brain damage. Till next time, remember the number one rule, do not chang it up. I thank you in advance for your cooperation.